What's up, divas and divos? It's your girl, April. So you guys already know what time it is. It's Real Talk Wednesday. Um, please excuse me if I sound a little bit raspy, congested. I have been sick for like the past week, thanks to Mumsy, okay? Like when I say sick, I mean like this is like the worst cold that I have ever gotten. And it has kind of like... It hasn't crippled me, but dang, I have never felt like this sick in a long time. So, yes, please excuse me, and it feels like my ears are popping. But first of all, I want to thank everybody for all of their condolences, even the emails that I received, just, you know, hoping that I feel better regarding my dog, Coco. I'm, if you guys have not watched Real Talk last week, you know, you can always check it out. But um, a week ago, in three days, because today is Tuesday, but a week ago, a Sunday, the Sunday before Thanksgiving, my Dotson Coco, who I've had since he was a baby, a baby baby, um, he passed away. And he was 12 years. I've had him for 12 years. So it was like a horrible, a horrible shock for me to come home and find him like that in my backyard. And it just like really hit me hard. And, you know, I am getting over it. Not, 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 not getting over it, but I am getting through it. I'm understanding and I'm, it's not that I'm not even understanding because I still don't understand why, you know what I'm saying? Like it really bothers me, but I'm working on it. Basically I'm working on it. Um, the day before Thanksgiving, the, um, 24 hour animal hospital, which is also an animal clinic and an animal eye care place an animal grooming place. They, um, called me and I was not going to answer the phone because I didn't know the number. And they let me know that his ashes were in, um, which was really early um, because it was supposed to be like a week to a week and a half. And like I said, he passed away on a Sunday. So they got me his ashes by Wednesday. And I was really happy about that because I was able to bring him home. And, you know, I put him in a living room, in one of my living rooms where he always laid at. And he's able to spend Thanksgiving with us. And, you know, he's just able to be there. So it... it it's not like, it's it's weird, you know what I'm saying? It's really strange not having him around, and I'm pretty sure there are a lot of people that can totally relate to how I feel about him. Um, I do have two other dogs. Um, my other dog, I've only had her for a year. She's a rescue dog. Um, she's nine years old, so I rescued her from the shelter. And then my puppy, um, she's three and a half months old. I got her, like, the very, very beginning of October, like October 4th, I got her. Um, so... You know, Coco did play with her, and they were in, like, a recent vlog video, a vlog, a family vlog video, playing together. And so, it's kind of hard for me. Um, you know, don't get me wrong, I do care about my other dogs, um, and I love them just as much. But Coco is the family dog, and he's been with me from New York to Arizona. I've had him since he was a baby, so... You know, he has, like, this special place in my heart that no animal will be able to to feel. So I, I do really miss him a lot. And, um, it's just strange. It's really strange without him. Um, I decorate a lot for Christmas and I'll tell you what, I remember all the time he would pee on my Christmas tree, like up against it. Cause it was a tree and he did this for the longest. He stopped doing it for a past few years, but this was his thing just to pee up against my Christmas tree because you know, it's a tree. So I guess he was confused. He doesn't like to go outside anyway. So he just was like, Oh, we got a tree in the house now. I'm about to pee up against that. So that was his, his attitude. So we had decorated for Christmas and I was just like, you know what? I'll give anything for him to be back peeing up against my Christmas tree right now. I wouldn't even get mad. And so I did some things for him for Christmas, this Christmas. Um, I do have like inflatables in front of my house. Like I have a Santa, a snowman, and I had a reindeer. Well, we went and got a Datsun this year, a mini Datsun inflatable. And um, we call him Coco for Coco. Um, and then I have like his bowl, his food dish in my kitchen above where he ate. I made that. I made that into like a little shrine for him. But I also, what I found really strange about the whole situation is not even the whole situation about life in general is I, I, I constantly feel like I hear him you know what I mean like I can hear him and it's just weird without him you know and I just want him to be here but anyway so last night I was editing a video I was editing a video um that I had did like you know probably like the week to a week and a half before he passed away. Um, and I do a lot of videos all in one day. This is what I do. And then I just timely, shortly upload them. 
Well, in this video, I was doing a wig review, and the wig review is already posted up today, which is Tuesday. And um, as I was editing it, I'm, you know, I'm just, I'm styling the hair. And at that point, I don't really talk. I'm just styling the hair. But at that point, you can hear everything in my surroundings because I'm not saying much. But I edit that part out. You know, I mute the video. I mute that part out. Well, as I was editing it, all I heard in the background was Coco barking, barking, barking that day. And he wasn't even barking at anything. Well, he was actually someone was leaving a package. They wasn't even ringing the doorbell. They had came up on my property. So he just was barking, 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 barking throughout the video as I was styling my hair. And it was just so cool and just so sad at the same time because at least I get to hear his bark still. And so I had to clip that part of the video out and like save it as a, as a music file. And then I like emailed it to myself so that I could keep, I could hear it on my phone. And to some people that probably sounds weird, but you know, it's just how I feel about him. But I want to thank everybody because I am getting through it, and um, I just miss him a lot. I really do. I really miss him a lot, and it's hard It's because he was a part of my family, so it feels like an actual human being has been, you know, gone. Um, but we talk about him every day, and I talk to him every day in his little urn, and some people probably think that's really weird too, but um, I speak to him every day, you know. And if that's what that's how I feel about him, and that's how I feel about healing. But yeah, I just wanted to thank everybody for that. Um, and I hope everybody had like a really great Thanksgiving. I did, but the funny thing about it was, I'm gonna tell you this quick story. And if you want to check it out, you can go on my Instagram. Um, you know, first of all, I didn't even feel like doing any wig videos after the whole issue what happened with my dog. I didn't, I didn't record any videos except for the real talk. I had enough videos where I could edit them. And I felt like I just wanted to edit my videos because it gave me something to do and sit around moping. So anyway, I had promised this company way before the incident with my, 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 I was about to say my son, with my Coco. I had promised him, yes, I could do a rush video for you. And yes, you'll have it up the day prior to Thanksgiving. So they said they was going to send out the wig. It was already a wig made. I didn't have to do anything. So anyway, I never got the wig. I'm, I'm supposed to have it up on Wednesday. I was going to post a real talk, and I was going to have that wig video up too. The, the, the Chinese people called me on Monday afternoon talking about um, they just sent the hair out. So I got the hair like Wednesday. I got the hair on Wednesday. Okay, there was no way for me to do the video then and post it up that same day. So let me tell you. I cooked and I did a video on fucking Thanksgiving, okay? Mind you, I had to do my makeup for the video. And in the description, it didn't say anything about make the video exclusive and all about them. Just no less than 10 minutes and bring out my best in this wig video to show the best in the wig or whatever. You know, add some things to it and pizzazz it up. So I decided, you know what? I'm not about to sit here for 10 minutes and talk about somebody wig. Like, that's kind of boring, okay? you There's a million videos on YouTube about wigs. I, th I felt like, you know something? This is going to go from baddie, from bad to baddie. Like, a get ready with me featuring their hair. So I showed how I did my makeup. And as well as that, as I showed the wig straight out the box. How I cut it off the mannequin head. How I styled it. Everything and even how I curled it. The the wig was not curled in the video. I curled I did all this in eleven minutes. Do you know these motherfuckers was like, Oh, they don't wanna pay me because I was showing makeup in the video and how their their portion was only like five minutes, four minutes, just kept going on and on and on. So you mean to tell me that I worked for you guys on my fucking day of, of rest and kept a I did this because I kept a promise to you. I told you, and then I said, okay, well, you know what? I can at least get it up for you on Black Friday because it's not my fault y'all had this shit to me sent late. Anyway, they didn't want to pay me on Monday night. And um, I was like, oh, so you really don't want to pay me? And I told him, I said, listen, if you don't pay me, I'm going to do a new video for you. And it's going to be about how you just treated me. And I'm going to also go on social media. I guess they felt like it was a joke and it wouldn't even matter. So I did that. I posted it on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Well, thanks to all you ladies who just love me and support me as much as I love you guys. I want to thank you guys because as I posted it, 
every single person was going off on double leaf wig, like going in on them. And they didn't know what to do. They didn't know what to do. First, they was like, we not tell her, we not pay her. We pay her, but we not like her video. Like, really, you don't like my video. There's nothing wrong with my video. She not sit there and talk about a wig for 10 minutes. Who the fuck want to hear somebody talking about a wig for 10 fucking minutes? Like, seriously, I try to break them videos down as quick as possible because I know me personally, I'm not trying to sit there and listen to you talk about no fucking wig for 10 minutes. 10 minutes? Can you show me some shit along with that? Because I don't really want to sit there watching you for 10 fucking minutes talking about the same motherfucking wig. Well, they tried to say they didn't say they was going to pay me all of this shit. They said, oh, we're going to pay her, but we just not like her video. We never tell her we not pay her. Then they sent me emails talking about, oh, we're going to sue you if you don't take this down off of Instagram. That's why we're not paying you. I tell you, I'm not going to pay you because we not like your video. Okay, so you, you going on Instagram saying you didn't say that, but you emailing me again twice telling me that you did say it. So I had to screenshot that shit and put it on Instagram too. Let me tell you, by the end of the evening, okay, and this only had to go on for like an hour and a half, okay? Within that hour and a half to two hours, did they run me my motherfucking money? Yes, the fuck they did. The owner of the company called my phone twice because the first time I told him, don't call me unless you got my motherfucking money, okay? Then he calls me back and he was like, please just take it down. I will pay you in the morning. I said, I ain't taking shit down until you pay me my motherfucking money. Don't call my phone. Don't tell me you don't like my video. Don't tell me I didn't follow your guidelines. Your guidelines wasn't shit. You know what I'm saying? You and you don't want to pay me. Talk about well, your people they are they are hurting my business and all of this shit. Like, and what your point is? Cause it's cheaper for you to pay me than to lose all these motherfucking customers. So they pay me my money, but you know what? I still didn't take that fucking post down that I did because I shouldn't have to go through all of that shit just to get you to run me my motherfucking money. I worked on the fucking day of a holiday because it was y'all fault to be late with the fucking wig. And you don't want to run me my money? You didn't tell me to talk about your wig. You said, do your best to bring out the wig, glamorize it. So that's what the fuck I did. I went from looking like shit to looking nice and cute, okay? But you don't want to pay me my money? Don't nobody want to, I had to tell him, don't nobody want to sit there and watch me for 10 minutes talk about your hair, okay? And in the comments, it said that how much they liked the wig and how I, liked, how I styled it. So let's not go there and keep talking about the shit. I kept the post up. I didn't care about taking the post the fuck down because I shouldn't have to keep fucking doing shit like this to get my money, okay? Now, we're going to keep this up because I'm going to need everybody to see this shit. And if you lose customers well, then that's nobody's fault but yours. So that, for one, fucked up my, my week. You know what I'm saying? It didn't even fuck up my week, but, you know, this is how my week went. And let me tell you guys. Now... Y'all know I had went and got my two front teeth fixed, okay? And I have a lot of dental work that I had to get done, okay? Now, mind you, I got people talking about how um, ever since I got my teeth fixed, I'm different, okay? The only thing different about me now, bitch, is that I smile a whole lot more. But that ain't even, I, my teeth ain't even fixed. Like, I got missing teeth on the side, on the side here. I got my tooth pulled two weeks ago, and y'all don't even know that, but look. Okay, and on top of that, I got to get another root canal, and I got to get another tooth pulled back here, so I'm going to have no teeth on the bottom, and no teeth on the top on the sides. I have no teeth as it is on the sides on both of them, and I have none back here, but this one little tooth, and none down here. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, today is Tuesday, but by the time y'all see this, it'll be Wednesday. I was supposed to go Wednesday, today, which is really to Wednesday when y'all watch this, to get a root canal done. Okay, I've been going to the same dentist. $942 for a molar root canal. Or I can get it pulled. If I get it pulled, I ain't going to have no fucking teeth there. And I, and I ain't going to be able to eat. So I was like, all right, cool. I'm going to just go do this. I don't really feel like spending $942. Let's just round that shit off. It's $100. You know what I'm saying? Let's just round that shit the fuck off. I'm like, you know, I really don't feel like spending $1,000. But I'm going to do this. So I'm sitting there, probably like, I think Friday or Saturday. I think it was probably like Friday. Yeah, it was probably like Friday. I'm sitting there on my couch making a wig like I always fucking do. And I get this phone call from a strange number. Now, mind you, 
I'm not about to answer it because I don't know it. The airy code is way the fuck off. I'm not about to answer the shit. But I answer it. Why is it a recording? And I'm like, oh, great. I'm about to hang up. But then I just listen. <sighs> Talking about we can cut your dental bill in half and all this shit. Press one if you want to hear more. Press two if you want to be removed from the calling list. So, of course, the bitch press one. I speak to this guy named Mark. He's telling me all about this dentist's office. Like, actually, eight-minute drive versus a 15, 20-minute drive. Okay. So he was like, if you have a dental plan, a treatment plan that they've already did for you, because I just was there two weeks ago, he's like, bring it to the office. So I bring it to the office, and I, and I reschedule my, re my root canal for the end of December. When I get there today, long story short, I give them my treatment plan and tells them how much it's going to cost me for my bridge, crown bridge on the side, all of this shit. Okay? Let me just tell y'all bitches this. God is good and he works in the most mysterious ways because five minutes before I got that strange phone call, I'm sitting there bitching to myself because, you know, I talk to myself sometimes, bitching to myself about how I'm going to have to give these motherfuckers $942. Round the shit off April is $1,000 because what the fuck is, you know what I'm saying, $58. I mean, $58 is it's money, but that shit is, is way less than what the fuck, okay? So... You know, I get the phone call and I make the appointment, okay, for today, Tuesday. I went in today. Let me tell y'all. Let me tell y'all, bitches, okay? This office was so cool. The daggone um, dentist, he came in and he was like, oh, wow, dang, I like your glasses. Like, yo, I was like, who are you? You know what I'm saying? Because he was mad friendly. He didn't even have on no dentist clothing. He was young. Like, I, I didn't know what the fuck was going on. So I was like, and you are? Who are you? He was like, I'm Dr. Such and Such. I was like, you the dentist? And he was like, yeah. I was like, what? So he sits down, we talk, and we just kicking it and stuff. You know what I'm saying? We talking and kicking it. Super cool. By the time the whole thing, they did, everything was free today, like the x rays. The procedures, everything that they did today was free, okay? Th that you normally pay like $100 for, it was free. Let me tell y'all, okay? Now, mind you, you have to pay a membership fee. The membership, or else you're not going to get half of One-time fee of $150. I, have, I need, like, altogether, my dental work is, like, like rounded off. It's $18,000, $17,000 and some change. But if you are to become, like, a member and pay your one-time Membership fee of $150. All of your dental costs are broken in half, okay? Everything is half. And I know it's that much because I've already had a treatment plan from my prior dentist. And he quoted me $20,000. So he was kind of like robbing me, okay? So, and this is what I was working on paying him. Let me tell y'all. So, for all of this shit that I have to get done, I'm going to have a whole bunch of crowns down here, here, and up here. And three root canals. Um six extractions, five fillings, all the shit, I only have to pay like $8,000, okay? And you can either go through some kind of care thing where you can pay them and they'll pay your dental bill or you can pay the dentist themselves. So for me, all I have to do is pay them half of that right now, half of that $8,000. And then the other half, she said, I'll break it up for you in 24 months. Either way, it was so much more affordable. I could not believe how much an extraction was. Like, their extractions, if you don't, if you're not a member, it's 186. My dentist was 200. But if you are a member, you pay 150. That one time fee of 150 dollars, then you, it's half of 186 to get a tooth pulled. And you can go there even if you have all your work done. You can go there for emergencies, cleanings, and everything. And you don't pay for any of that. You just pay for the stuff that you have to get done. That was like the best blessing in the world. I'm so happy and excited because I get to get my teeth pulled out, okay? And I know y'all like, what, bitch? You, I'm not happy about getting my fucking teeth pulled out, but, okay, listen. Listen, Linda, listen, okay? When you can save more than half, okay, it's a blessing. Who the fuck want to pay 20 Gs to get their teeth fixed? Like, this is the treatment plan that I was given when I first went to the dentist. And then, again, when I went two weeks ago, okay? It went up a little bit because now I had to get a, an extra root canal. On top of that, 
the fillings that he did, my my dentist that I went, I was going to prior, the new dentist, he was like, oh, look at my mouth. He's like, when did you get your fillings done, you know? And I was like, huh? He was like, when did you get your fillings done? Because they need to be redone. I was like, I got them done back in February. He was like, what? And he was like, they're so bulky. And one of them is, but I didn't know, you know, I don't know. But I know the surface cap um, filling, it keeps breaking off and I have to keep going back to the dentist and getting it put back on. He don't charge me, but still, he's like, you know, he don't charge me, but still, I, I paid you $1,100 for four fillings when I could have paid them $500 and something dollars for four fillings because it's half, okay? And on top of that, the one that you done filled me up with, and I have to keep going back and having you fix it, it's got a cavity around it already. Let me tell you something. Like I said, God works in mysterious ways. And thank you, Jesus, because you are a blessing, okay? Thank you, because this is what I needed. I sat there on that couch and was bitching the fucking self out of myself. Bitching about that money. So now, I mean, I could still bitch about $8,000 or I could bitch about twenty. You You do the math. You decide on which one you want to do. You know what I'm saying? So that's how my week has been. And hopefully I'll remember to put the dentist office down below. But you can go on their website. It's called un Unlimited Unlimited Dentistry.com. I know they only work out here in Arizona because that's what it said on their thing. Maybe they do somewhere else. But it's Unlimited Dentistry.com. And hopefully I'll remember to put their phone number and stuff. But they have a bunch of different offices throughout the Arizona or Phoenix Valley, which is awesome. Okay? Awesome. So guys, I've wasted enough of your time, so we're going to get into this real talk. If you have a real talk that you need to discuss, you need me to talk about, you need me to spill the tea, you know, drop some knowledge, okay? Then you can always send me an email to muffinismylovers2012 at gmail.com. Please put in the subject line, real talk. And if you like the persons in your email's names to be changed, please let me know ahead of time that they you have changed your name. If you didn't and you don't tell me that, I'm just going to assume that you don't care or that you have changed them. So on that note, let's get into this real talk, you guys. Okay. Huh? 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 What? Okay, you guys, so this one is real talk, urgent, please help, long email. This is everything she said. I didn't say none of this stuff. This is what she said. Hello, Miss April. Please excuse my English as it is a secondary language for me. So my email could be all over the place. You can call me Lisa. And I am currently in a messy situation right now. I live in Asia, Japan, and our culture here is quite con conservative, but not extremely conservative. We value our names, our character, and dignity. I went to Sweden four years ago with my family for a trip, and I have met a wonderful guy. You can call him Adam. That became a best friend of mine. So even when I came back to my country, we still kept in touch and have been in constant communication with one another. Two years ago, I visited Switzerland and have met the first guy that I have fallen in love with. You can call him Travis. We started out as friends, have been into constant FaceTimes and spending more and more time talking with each other that eventually we became an online couple. Now remember, there's Adam, who she met four years ago in Sweden, who is basically her best friend, okay? And they keep in constant communication, excuse me. And then two years ago, she went to Switzerland and met Travis, who she has fallen in love with, and they are an online couple, okay? A couple of months later, my friend from Sweden, Adam, confessed his feelings for me when he visited here in Japan. He is not a bad-looking guy. He is a son of a popular bodybuilder in Sweden, nor does he have a bad character. The only thing is, I only see him as a good friend, a very good friend, who knows me inside and out, vice versa. So, of course, my decision was to turn him down because I'm already in a relationship, which he knows. That is the truth. I had no feelings for him. We talked for hours at the park. We both cried, and we both understood where my side and his side is coming from. He was hurt so bad that he eventually he stopped communicating with me and just disappeared from my life. So Adam, her best friend from Sweden, disappeared from her life after he confessed of loving her or basically how he feels about her. 
And after she let him down, he come, he just disappeared. You know, his feelings. He was in his feelings. Moving on to my relationship with Travis, my boyfriend from Switzerland. He admitted to me that he cheated. I forgave him and he ended everything in good terms. And no, not to be friends, but to end everything from a loving distance from one another. Oh, wait. Moving on to my relationship with my boyfriend from Switzerland, he admitted to me that he cheated. I forgave him and we ended everything in good terms. And no, not to be friends, but to end everything from a loving distance from one another. I'm not really sure what that means. A few months in after the breakup, he contacted me and is asking me to come back to him, which I turned down as I am already in a good place and I have healed from the past. Like the Swedish guy, he just disappeared from my life after I turned him down. Fast forward to my current situation. It happened two days ago. I have found out from my close friends and some acquaintances that there are two people adding them from their social media through my social media and are spreading lies and hurtful things about me. Just like any gossip, some are true, some are false, and some are just plain absurd and damaging to one's character. And when I checked who those two people were, it was Adam and Travis. They weren't even subtle about it or hid who they were, meaning this is an attack planned against me. These two guys have nothing in common, but they have bonded and teamed up because of one thing, their hatred towards me, Miss April. Some of the things that were said about me was hurtful and damaging, and I have lost some friends because of it. I feel betrayed and heartbroken to the point of thinking about committing suicide. I think I might handle it if it was just me, but why involve other people that are not involved to begin with? I tried to contact both of them, but I got rejected. I don't know how to cope or find inner strength about my current situation. I am afraid they will just keep going and continue to mess um, and, and continue this mess that they have started. Please help. We have. Please help me have an insight on this situation. So, dang. Okay, I didn't know men. Well, you know what? Men are messy, too. Okay, so basically, okay, listen. Did she took, give me her name? Lisa. So, Lisa is in, like, a bind. It ain't really even a bind, okay? It ain't even that serious, okay? It really ain't even that serious. So, Lisa went to Sweden four years ago with her family. They went on their little family trip from Japan, you know. For somebody who says that they ain't got good language, English, girl, you are, you speak perfectly English. I didn't have to make up nothing in this email. I didn't have to strain to read it. Everything was perfect. Now, first of all, like I said, Lisa went to Sweden four years ago with her family. They went on a little family vacation, and she met Adam there. Adam and her have constant communication. they best friends. That's all there is to it. Adam confessed his feelings and love to um, Lisa when he came to Japan, but she let him know, listen, I already have a boyfriend, which is Travis. She met Travis two years ago when she was in Switzerland. So that's the only time she got to see Travis. They ain't nothing but an online couple, okay? Now, they were an online couple. She done broke up with Travis, her online boyfriend, because he didn't admit it. He cheated on her. And so they ended it in, in good terms, not to be friends, but, you know, just end it. Now, mind you, later on down the road, Travis want to be back with Lisa. But she don't want him back no more. And Adam, after Lisa done told, her, told him, no, I just want to stay best friends. We best friends. I feel we are good as best friends. He disappeared out of her life. He, he, he got in his feelings. Adam was in his feelings. You know what I'm saying? He didn't, he, he wasn't trying to hear that shit about, we just going to be friends. I want to be your man. That's what the fuck Adam wanted to, to be. He wanted to be her man. But she didn't feel for him like that. She only wanted to be his best friend. And she explained that to him. And so she thought he was okay with that, but he disappeared out of her life. And then once she found out Travis cheated on her, well, she ended that with him. And that nigga disappeared out of her life. However, these two motherfuckers then teamed the fuck up and then went on Facebook and is talking shit about her. Okay? Let me tell you something. She has not only has had they talking shit about her, but they are they are friend requesting her friends. I don't understand why people do that dumb shit. Now, first of all, you a grown ass man. You you maybe not grown because you're doing dumb shit like this. But as a man, I would think that that was like so girly-ish. 
Okay? Do you guys have gay tendencies? All right? And I didn't know men getting their feelings that fucking deep to where they got to go on fucking social media and start shit up. Or maybe, you know what? I'm lying. I'm, I'm fucking lying. Because I do know that. But I just think that's like, I don't even do shit like that. And I'm a girl. I'm a female. I don't do shit like that. Like, I don't really get nothing out of that shit. I mean, I might have did it to the wig company, but I ain't even that. It wasn't even no rumors and lies. It's what the fuck you did, okay? And you think you want to be out here on social media punking people and trying to manhandle me? Nah, we're not about to do that. Hell to the fucking no. But men, you get in your feelings like that, and you go around and you spread rumors and lies about people, and friend requests, they friends. Like, who the fuck does that shit? But... The thing is, Lisa said, because of Adam and Travis doing shit and saying shit like this about her on social media, she has lost good friends. No, Lisa, you ain't lost no good friends. They never was your motherfucking friends to begin with. If your friends are supposed to be your so-called friends, and now you got your ex-boyfriend and your ex-friend on social media talking shit about you and friend requesting your so-called friends and then they spreading lies and rumors and your so-called supposed to be good friends or supposed to be your friends, then they should not even be feeding into none of that bullshit that your ex-boyfriend and your ex-friend Adam say about you. If that was really, truly your friends in real life, in reality, then they wouldn't even be falling for none of that bullshit that Adam and Travis talked about, okay? Because I'm saying, though, if you my friend, we best friends, that's like me and my bestie, Rebecca. If she was to go on social media and read some shit about me, why would she change her mind about being my friend? So you just going to go off of what people say about me and not be my friend? Then, bitch, if that's the case, you ain't never was my friend to begin with. And adios, amigos, okay? If that's how it goes down, I'm glad that I seen your true colors and I don't need you for a friend. So, Lisa, Lisa here's the number one rule. Those wasn't your motherfucking friends to begin with. Because if they so easy to manipulate and they so easy to not want to speak to you again and they so easy to unfriend you and they so easily to just believe and do whatever somebody else that they don't even fucking know say in, in here, then they ain't your motherfucking friends. They weak individuals. And you don't need friends like that. Because I'll be damned if I'm going to have some friends that's weak individually. Because, bitch, if you weak and I'm not... We can't be friends because I'm not going to be constantly taking up for you and constantly patting you on the motherfucking back because you need a shoulder to cry. Like, yeah, we friends and that's what friends do, but I'm not going to constantly do that shit because you're so weak-minded. Like, what the fuck? You're going to get us in some dumb shit because your ass is weak-minded. Like, I'm sorry, but I'm going to just pass on being your friend. Trust and believe, if, I'm not, if that's supposed to be my motherfucking friend and you done fucking showed your true colors and decided not to speak to me no more because my ex-boyfriend, who was my online boyfriend, and my ex-best friend, who was my online ex-best friend, came and said some shit about me to you, and then now you want to judge me because of what the fuck they told you, and you already know that he's my ex and he's my ex, why the fuck do I need you to be my friend? Why don't you go be Adam and Travis' friend then? Now let me tell you something. That, this social media, sweetheart... Social media shit go on all the motherfucking time. Social media bullshit, social media foolishness, social media fuckery, okay? Now, you want to hurt yourself and kill yourself over some bu bullshit on social media? Let me say this much. If that's what you want to do, Lisa, then I should have been motherfucking dead, okay? Meaning, I done had people on social media, on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube talk about my motherfucking teeth. From day one, okay? And I still held it the fuck together. They done talked about me being married to a fucking criminal, okay? A drug dealer, okay? They done talked about... They just done talked about me in general, all right? Just, just let's put it like that. They done talked about me in general. And what makes it so bad is... My business is out there because I may put my business out there and y'all see me on Insta in, on YouTube, on social media. So, for you to say you want to kill yourself over these minute... Things that these fucking baby boys are saying about you is ridiculous, honey. You don't never let nobody get you to that point in life, okay? Never. I wouldn't give a fuck if they was in your face saying the shit about you. Ain't nobody worth killing yourself over, okay? I'm sorry. Even if it was your mother and your father and that was all you had in the world, sweetheart, nobody is worth taking your own life over, okay? And these men, they not even worry. They not even worth your time to think the fuck about. If that's what the fuck they want to do is go around and sit around and talk about you, let me tell you something then let them because i let me let me say this 
sometimes it gets to me when people talk about me or not even talk about me, but say shit that I don't like. Like, you, you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, I changed because I got my teeth fixed. Or, oh, I ain't the same because I wear contacts. Like, bitch, I only wore them contacts a few times. And I'm sorry that I got my teeth fixed. I should have just kept them raggedy ass motherfucking teeth in my mouth. You know what I'm saying? But that shit right there pisses me the fuck off because that's not even, sh that's not even like rumors. That's you being hateful. But when people say, oh, well, she fat or just saying mean, mean things in general, lies and rumors, I don't let it bother me. You know what I'm saying? I don't let it bother me. Sometimes I like it and sometimes I just be just as petty as they can and I will go back and forth with them. But then sometimes it's like, you know what, bitch? You wasting all that time thinking about me and writing about me. Yeah, don't just sit here and say you just decided to write that shit because you dislike me. No, bitch, you writing all of this shit about me because you mad, because you hating, because you jealous. Right. So sometimes I love it when people talk about me on social media because at least you still making me relevant. Bitch, you can say my motherfucking coochie stink. You still making me relevant, though it doesn't. OK, though it doesn't stink. But I'm saying this is what people do. They talk shit about you regardless of what. Them two may stop talking about you tomorrow, sweetheart. They may stop talking about you next week, next month, next fucking year. After a while, sweetheart, you're going to become old news to them. They're not going to talk about you, but I guarantee you this much. Somebody else is going to come along, and they're going to fucking talk about you. And then when they're done talking about you, somebody else is going to come along and talk about you. That's what the fuck people do. And you know what? I have come to the um, conclusion, like, bitch, make me motherfucking relevant all day long, okay? Talk shit about me all motherfucking day long if you want to. Bitches is probably going to say this. Bitch, didn't you have that shirt on two weeks ago Cause when you had your blonde wig on? Yes, the fuck I did, okay? But you know what? I wanted to wear it again today because it was washed, and I like it, and I like being comfortable, so I put the fucking shit on today. But some bitch is going to be out there commenting or whatever, talking about, oh, she had that on two weeks ago. Or a bitch might say, um... She always wearing them fucking leggings that she got on. She always wearing those. But you know what, bitches? No, the fuck I don't be wearing the same leggings every day. Because as you guys can see, a bitch got several pair of them. Then the other two pair are dirty. And, and then I just went and bought another pair. Okay? I got several pair of them. You see, these motherfuckers got tags on them, okay? I told y'all bitches I was dead ass serious about these motherfucking leggings, okay? Yes. So, y'all might see me with these same motherfucking leggings, the same style of leggings, in a couple of my fucking try-on videos, okay? But I'll tell y'all bitches this much. If you want to go ahead and talk about it and say, oh, she got them same leggings or she stay wearing them leggings, you can say that the fuck if you want to. But just remember this much, bitch. I got five pair of them motherfuckers, okay? Five pair. And a bitch about to go buy, like, two more. For real. I know y'all bitches is like, why in the fuck could you keep buying them same fucking leggings? Because I likes them, okay? I really do likes them, all right? These are some nice-ass leggings from Target, all right? They are thick material. They are fucking high-waisted, okay? High-fucking-waisted band. They are thick. They don't roll up. They ain't see-through. They are good fucking material. Well-made. Best $14 I have ever spent. Well... I spent more than $14 because I got five pair. But y'all get the, the point. So, my point is this, Lisa. Bitches, niggas, whoever, they gonna constantly talk about you. Somebody always got something to say. And I say this. Make me the motherfucking relevant, okay? Make me relevant, bitch. I don't give a fuck, okay? I could care less what y'all motherfuckers say about me. But here's the thing. I'm not about to go ahead and hurt myself and, and say I want to commit suicide over the shit, neither. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to allow anybody to get to me. And this is the part where I need you to understand, Lisa. They only want to get at you and to bother you and to irritate you and to hurt your feelings like you hurt their feelings. And even though when you hurt their feelings, it wasn't intentionally, you didn't do it to be mean. You didn't even do it to hurt their feelings. What you did was you told your friend, your so-called best friend, I don't want to have a relationship with you. I just want to remain friends with you. You was being honest, and that's what friends do. And if he was man enough to understand that shit, then he would. And as for Travis, trifling fucking ass, well, let's see, he cheated on you, and what the fuck was you supposed to do? Continue on a relationship with him? No, you did what you were supposed to. But I doubt that he's on social media saying that he cheated on you either, right or wrong. 
Um, or you could say this. Y'all motherfuckers just mad because, um, let's see, y'all both want me, but I don't want neither one of y'all. So now y'all gonna go spread rulers about me? Y'all a bunch of bitches. That's, that's just how I would take it. And like I said, about your so-called friends that ain't your friends no more because of the shit that Travis and Adam is doing... Bitch, be happy they not your motherfucking friends no more because they was never your goddamn friends to begin with, okay? Had they been, then they would have still stuck around for this dumb shit that was going on right now. Let me tell you something, sweetheart. It's the internet. This is where people get a lot of balls and, and shit, okay? This is where they feel like Hercules. That's, this is where they feel like they, they strong and they almighty. It's the internet. I don't argue with people on the motherfucking internet because I don't have time for that shit. You ain't about to fucking blood, um, make my blood pressure go the fuck up. I'm not about to sit here with you and argue with you about this shit. This is not what we going to fucking do, okay? What the fuck we going to do is we can either handle that shit in person, bitch, or you going to sit there and shut the fuck up, or you going to sit there and make your own self look stupid and keep talking about me and making me relevant. Just like that bitch did in my fucking makeup haul video where she had the audacity to say how, oh, I changed because um, I got my fucking teeth fixed and how I speak proper. Bitch, I always spoke fucking proper. I don't use slang words. I don't know what the fuck you thinking, but this is how the fuck I always spoke. Or because I wore contacts when you see me wear them two motherfucking times prior to that video. Bitch, please. Bye. That's just hate. But if you still want to make me relevant, then go ahead. And everybody that read your comment looked at you and was like, damn, you hating. Damn, what's wrong with you? You so hateful. You know what I'm saying? Let them continue to make themselves look stupid, sweetheart, and you carry on with your business and find you a new group of friends, okay? And the friends that stuck around is your friends, but keep an eye out for them because they might not just be as well. But one thing you will not do is harm yourself over some sorry-ass little boys who go on social media and talk shit about a, a woman. Who the fuck does that? They ain't even worth my time or yours, okay? So now, Lisa, with that being said... Move past it, move forward, and let them continue to talk about you. Because you know what? At the end of the day, it's always called karma. Bitch, they're going to get theirs regardless. For real. They're going to get theirs regardless. So on that note, let's move on to the next real talk. Okay? And how would you guys handle it? Like, I mean, <laughs> I don't know about y'all, but me personally... I, I don't I don't play that bitch shit with guys running around talking about a women like that. Like I mean, like if that's what you want to do, then do that. You know, I've already had that situation with that that asshole that I had to get rid of out of here. Like that's what he fucking did. But you know what though? In reality, he's a bitch anyway. He's a straight up bitch anyway. So you could expect that out of him. And he's a snitch. And when I say he's a motherfucking snitch, meaning the niggas a snitch. He go around. He get in trouble. He do crime, and then he get in trouble and he snitch on the person he did the crime with. So his time would be lessened. Everybody know him as a motherfucking snitch. A bitch like me know him as a snitch because I seen your paperwork. Okay? So do I really need to make that shit public? No, because we all know. But those type of people, they, they known as bitches, and that's just what they do. So I wouldn't even let that shit bother me. Definitely not let it bother me. Now let's move on to the next. Okay, guys, so this one is the title, I Don't Want Anything to Do With My Parents Anymore. Hey, April, I love your channel, and I try and watch your real talk every week. What you mean you try, girl? You should be doing this. I'm just messing with you. I'm sure you may have seen my comments on a few. You can call me Rose. I am 23 years old, and I'm really done with my parents. They've been together since they were teens and never got married. They have always had an extremely toxic relationship since I can remember. Like, honestly, things are never normal or happy and peaceful for long. I feel like I grew up thinking one thing and to find out everything has been a fucking lie. Let me be more specific. My dad and mom have gotten into many physical fights. Growing up, I can remember seeing some of them. My dad has always been verbally abusive and physically abusive to my mom. He always had a very bad temper, been controlling, and very scary. Growing up, I was terrified of my father. He has always been in and out of prison when I was young. Long story short, I am now older and I can see the truth with the help of my sister and many, many times my husband pointing out the truth to me because clearly I have been extremely naive when it comes to being nice to my parents, giving them money, having them take my money, etc., mess up my credit. I grew up thinking family is everything and that's all I have and my parents drilled that in my head. It wasn't until I got older I realized the lies, manipulation, 
and just straight fuckery that surrounds my parents. I can tell you so many horrible stories like when my dad pushed me, cursed me out, told me he didn't give a fuck about me, all because I jumped into his fights with my mom my entire life. These crazy violent incidents always happen on special occasions like holidays and gatherings. The most recent outburst was on Thanksgiving where things took a turn for the worse as usual and got fucking crazy. In the past, I have even had to physically put my hands on my own fucking father. I know that my parents' relationship is no good for my health overall. Recently, I have come to the, <coughs> the conclusion excuse me, that my dad is on drugs and has been for a long time. Wow. <coughs> I can remember seeing him doing drugs when I was younger, but I just didn't know what it was. <coughs> Excuse me, guys. Cocaine. As for my mom, I've always wondered why she stays with him and why she can't leave, and she has always made an excuse about him having no one else. <coughs> Excuse me for one second. I told you guys I was sick. Oh, sick. Okay, as for my mom, I've always wondered why she stays with him, why she can't leave, and she has always made an excuse about him having no one else. At this point, I believe that it actually is because she is on drugs with him and they just use each other as a, um, as a, cru as a um, crutch. At this point, I feel she is choosing him over her own kids, own children, and I'm just fucking done with it. I do not want to speak to either of them if my mother stays with him. What do you think? I know I didn't get into too much detail, but I didn't want this email to be too long. I know it as long as it is. But I'm just screaming inside. I'm so fucking tired of these lies and fake shit acting like our family isn't fucked up. And it ruins it when it's straight fuckery going on and over and over and over. I'm tired of feeling depressed and miserable about this. I'm ready to dead my parents. Meaning just not dead them, like literally kill them, but just like don't fuck with them. Let me know the truth, April. I know you will keep it real. Much thanks. God bless. Well, damn, Rose. I told you guys, Mumsy made me sick. I swear it feels like my ears are popping. Okay. So Rose is 23 years old and basically her parents are still together. They ain't never been married, which don't mean much. Um, but they've been together since she was, you know, they've just been always together. But the, it's foolishness. They fight. They constantly have fights, physical fights, verbal fights. Her father is verbally and physically abusive to her mom as well as to herself. And it's just an ongoing thing, like constantly. And she knows her father is using drugs and now she's thinking her mom is using drugs. And she's been asking her mother why she don't leave her father. And all her mother is saying is that, well, because he don't have no one. Bitch, he don't have you neither, okay? Her mom is staying with in this abusive relationship because he has no one. But the father just basically tells, um, told her, um, told Rose that he don't give a fuck about her because basically she's been always jumping in the fights to protect her mom. Let me tell you something, Rose. That is your mom and that is your dad. Those are your parents. And you will always love and respect them. Okay. Even though our parents do some shit that we don't like as kids or even as we don't like as adults, those are our parents. Now, we don't have to be around them like that as we get older because if they do fucked up things to you, you don't have to be around them. But you know what? The key to this is to respect them. Don't be disrespectful because they disrespectful to themselves and to one another because that's not what God would want you to do. And even though I'm not a godly person, like meaning I'm not very holier than thou, I just know that you are supposed to respect thy mother and thy father. That's what the fuck you're supposed to do. However, respecting your mother is taking up for her too. And you're not about to stand there and let your mom be beaten on by your dad. That's one thing you just don't allow. I could care less if you're my father, my best friend, my brother, or whoever. You're not about to stand here and put hands on my mama. And vice versa. However, they older, you older now, sweetheart. If they don't want to change their ways and your mother don't want to leave him, there's nothing you could do. You could talk to her until you blew in the face. She's not going to leave until she's ready to leave. And what makes it so fucked up sometimes is the more that you keep talking to a person and the more you try to convince them to leave, 
they it seems like they just stay longer like dead ass serious it just seems like it doesn't help them they just still want to be in the presence of that person that is toxic for them and sometimes it takes a whole lot for that person to leave them alone meaning they might get to the point where the relationship is so toxic and they have been beaten on and physically and mentally abused till that they can't take it no more and that's when they finally decide to leave but you telling her to leave is not going to make her to leave she may leave temporarily but she's going to go back to him because he's going to be able to convince her to go back. She's not going to leave until she wants to leave. That's that's how it is. And not with your mother, but with everybody in a relationship. A person is not going to leave a toxic relationship until they are ready to leave. You could take them out of that relationship and put them in a rehab. Um <coughs> Excuse me. You could put them in a shelter for women. You could do all kinds of things and get them help. They're not going to leave until they are ready to physically leave. Okay? And sometimes, like I said, it takes a whole lot for them to leave. Bear with me for one second. I have to clear my throat. <clears> throat> They're not going to leave until they want to leave. Trust and believe me when I tell you this. I have been in situations like that. Okay? I stayed with someone. My my husband, he was, he you know, he was an alcoholic at the time, and I didn't leave until I was ready to leave. I mean, he wasn't abusive or anything like that, but, you know what I'm saying? Same scenario. People are not going to leave any type of situation until they're ready to leave. It don't matter what the situation is. But here's the thing. You, you are grown. You got your own life. You got a husband. You got your sister. You have your own family. You know what I'm saying? And that's my husband texting me. Um... You have to do what's best for you. You know what I'm saying? You have to do what's best for Rose. You know what I'm saying? Um, you have to do what's best for Rose. You understand what I'm saying? You have to do what is good for you. Even though those are your parents and you want to be there for the both of them. And even though I know in your heart it's it's just sometimes it's, it's you're frustrated. And you said that. You're frustrated and it's built up. Okay? And it's built up over the years. And I get it. We get tired of the shit after a while. Regardless of what the situation is. We get tired of it. Like I was tired of him drinking all the time. I got tired of it. And what the fuck did I do? I packed up my shit and I moved all the way across the country to Arizona. Okay? Is he asking me, am I done with the dentist? Yes. I, okay. All right. Um, you know what I'm saying? I got tired of his drinking and I, I, I got, finally I got tired of it and I packed my shit up and I moved all the way across country. Sometimes we have to just disassociate ourselves from that person that is toxic to us and let them get it together on their own because it seems like the more you're there for a person and the more you're trying to help them, the less they want to help themselves. And it's fucked up and but that's just reality and that's just how it is. You know, they don't realize that they've lost something until they've actually lost it. Like with him. I just told him I was on a video. He keeps talking about, okay, I'll hit you up later. Then he sends it and then he's like, I love you. Can you just send me one text? I hate when people text me over and over and over again. Can you send it in one big paragraph? Okay. But anyway, and I had to do that. As much as I tried to get him help with, and I went with him to his counseling and I went with him to, to drinking and things to help him. He was, it was only a temporary fix for him. It was only a temporary help and he didn't. It's because I still stuck around. And when I finally decided to leave and, and, and just left, that's when he decided that it really fucked with him because I wasn't there anymore. I wasn't there. So, yeah, he, he continued to drink still and probably a little bit more because I was gone. But then he finally got it together and realized I'm going to get my family back because this is what fucked up my family. And this is what this is the reason why I lost my family. And this is the reason why my wife divorced me. It's because of my drinking. So you got it back together. And sometimes, we, like I said, you have to just leave that person the fuck alone just for them to get it together. And I know as, as that being your parents, it's hard. Even though you say this, like you just want to dead your parents, like meaning leave them the fuck alone, you know what I'm saying, and not fuck with them no more. In reality, you really don't mean that. And maybe you mean that more so about your father because it seems like we always are just so, so close to our moms a lot of the times. But I know that you care for them both and I know that you love them both because if you didn't, you wouldn't be emailing me this. However, it's hard um, to just leave our parents alone. As bad as uh, sometimes I just don't want to speak to my mom, not, not now, but when we've had our issues, I still love her and I still think about her. You know, some, sometimes I would cave in and talk to her, you know what I mean? But 
in reality, we sometimes have to just disassociate ourselves with these people because they are toxic for us. And we're toxic for them, whether you know it or not, because we're still there. Sometimes we got to leave people alone and they got to figure it out on their own. And I'll be the first to admit that with my own kids, like with my son, Wuzzle, who came back. It's like, okay, he, he, he's, he's 19 and he doesn't really want to do stuff for himself. I don't think he does. But he knows when he needs stuff, he can always call on me and I'm there for him and I'll do it for him. But if I continue to allow this behavior, what the fuck? He's just, it's, I'm going to be toxic for him and I'm not going to enable him to be the man that he wants to be. So I need to dis, not disassociate myself with him, but just dis, disassociate the stuff that I do for him. Okay, and not just for him, but for my daughter Tati and for my son Jerron. The same thing, you know, the three oldest. Because the more you do for them, the more they rely on you. Same thing with your parents. The more that you've been there and you've tried to talk to her and you've been in her corner, she's going to rely on you. And she knows she has the support system, which is you, okay? And it's not that she's choosing her husband. No, excuse me, that ain't her husband. It's not that she's choosing him over you guys. It's just that, you know what I'm saying? That's probably all she knows, and it's unfortunate. But that's probably all she knows. And until she's ready, she's going to be there with him until whenever. Now, all this shit about, oh, he don't have nobody else. Um, well, you know what? That's not her concern because really he don't really have her because if that, if that's how he felt about your mom, then he wouldn't treat her like that. You know what I'm saying? But Rose on some real shit, don't dead them 100%. Maybe dead your mom probably like 60% and your dad 90% because he's the abuser and don't be there for her as much. Meaning disassociate yourself. Don't come around. Don't call. Just be in the distance. Because eventually she's going to realize that things have changed between you and her, meaning you and her relationship. Don't go doing any more family things on holidays with them because, let me tell you something, don't set yourself up for failure. Meaning, you already know this shit is about to take place. You already know your, your father is going to act the fool and he's going to act the fuck up and he's going to show his ass at any type of family functions during the holidays. So why even put yourself in that predicament? Don't show up. You and your husband, don't show up to them family gatherings. Well, you ain't, you grown. You ain't got to fucking go there if you don't want to. Shit. That's how you start disassociating yourself. And this is when they start realizing like, damn, she didn't come around for this. She didn't come around for that. Okay, sorry about that, guys. That was a very important call um, because I have a very... Imp um, I really can't tell you guys now because it's going to be like... It's not a surprise, but it's going to be a surprise. But it's like... Um, well, it's something to deal with me. Um, but, yeah. You guys will... You will see this many months from now. And now I'm not having no baby or nothing like that. Okay, or getting married. Or, I wish I was. But anyway... <laughs> um. <laughs> So like I was saying, and I don't remember where I left off, but the whole point is to this with Rose. Like, you know, these are our parents, and we're always going to find something in them that just disturbs us and upsets us. And nobody's perfect. Not saying that I'm making up excuses for them, but... You know what I'm saying? You are grown up. You don't have to, you don't have to be around them like that anymore. And why I say this to you is because, you know why? Don't let them upset you and get you to the point where it's just, like, so unbearable to be around them. Just let it go. Sometimes you got to let shit go. Regardless of that's being your parents, sometimes you got to just let it go. And eventually, she's going to realize that you're not there for them like that. They're going to realize that you're not at them family functions. I mean, like me personally, I'm not about to drag myself to some family function where I know you're about to act up and show out. Like, we're not about to go there. So I just disassociate myself. I disassociate myself with a lot of fucking people. And that's just what the fuck I do in general because I just don't have the tolerance or the patience for people in general. But not in general, excuse me. I don't have the tolerance and the patience for people's bullshit in general. Now, people I have patience for, but the bullshit that they may bring to me, I don't have too much patience. I do and I don't. It all depends on the bullshit that they kick in. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes I can tolerate that shit, and I do tolerate it, okay? But then there's shit where, why should I tolerate it? And instead of me having to tolerate the shit, I'm just going to not be bothered with them, and I'm not going to go around because I'm not going to allow someone 
get my blood pressure boiling. I just said that. I'm not about to let you blood on my blood pressure boil. So for you, Rose, you know, even though those are your parents, so you have to just disassociate yourself with them. You know what I'm saying? Let them do this on their own because they're grown-ups. They're going to do whatever they want to do because they're grown-ups. And if your father has a junk problem, then you know what? The only thing that you could do for him is pray for him. You know what I'm saying? And even if you was to try to get him help, he ain't going to get help until he's ready to get help. Like I said, people do shit when they're ready to do it. Not because you want them to or you forced them to or you gave them an ultimatum. They're going to do the shit when they're ready to do it. And that's bottom line. Point blank, period. That's what the fuck they're going to do. So in the meantime, think about Rose and care about Rose. You got other family members that know how they are, and they probably don't associate themselves with them as much either. And that's the, that's the step you're going to have to take. You don't have to dead them completely because I know in your heart that you love them still. But, and if you didn't love them, then you wouldn't be telling me this because you want your mom to leave and you want your dad to do right. Sometimes you got to walk away. That's what they call tough love, unfortunately. You know, sometimes you got to walk away from people. It's hard to walk away from people that you really love because you don't want them to hurt themselves and you just want to help them and you want them to get better and you want them to do the right thing. But it's like, what the fuck? You are aggravating me now. You hurting me because you don't want to do what's right. And like, why put yourself in that situation? Like, I've been there so many times, you know what I'm saying? And I put myself in so many different situations where I've tried to help people or just get them out of certain situations and they just don't want to do it. And it's like, April, it's like, why? It's not even like, why bother? Because you know why you bother. But it's like, you know what? You got to leave it alone. It's hard to leave people alone that ain't doing right. It's that's the hardest part sometimes. But and then and you feel like you turn your back on them. But in reality, sometimes you turning your back on them is you doing the right thing for them. You know what I'm saying? You're not enabling them. You're you're kind of like an enabler. So just leave them alone. You ain't got to go around anymore. Not like that. You know what I'm saying? Just walk away. Walk away. That's a best that's better than being disrespectful to them and cursing them out because even though they do wrong, those are still your parents. And even though they may have told you lies and foolishness and fuckery and embarrassment, don't stoop to their level. Never stoop to their level. They still your parents. And maybe one day if you're not already, you will be somebody's parent too. And you're gonna do something that may embarrass that that child as well. Trust and believe. I've always sat there and said, I'm not gonna do this to my kid, I'm not gonna do that to my kid because my mom did the shit to me. But trust and believe a bitch has done so many more than what my mom has done to me. Until it's like, okay. So we're always gonna have that moment with our families. It's family, you know, and we should be there for one another. But you gotta realize when your mama call you and asks you, can she borrow two dollars, five dollars, or whatever she needs to borrow with your money, don't give it to her. I ain't got it. That's it. You ain't got to explain why. You ain't got to say, oh, I'm sorry when you're gonna pay me back or tell her none of that. I don't have it. Sorry. Okay. And as far as your credit, just work on it. You know they ain't gonna fucking fuck fix your credit. They definitely your parents is definitely not gonna fix your credit. So instead of sitting around moping about it, fix your credit on your own. But just know as a fucking rule of thumb and a lesson learned that you will never allow them to use anything under your name again. That's the price we have to do, and that's the price we have to pay for family sometimes. It fucks with us, family. It fucks us up in life sometimes, family. But sometimes we got to say no. If your mom and your dad be like, listen, we need $300, $300. We need some money to pay the rent, or, or we need some money to pay the light bill. The light's going to get cut off. I'm sorry, I don't got it. Sometimes you got to let them see that shit just so they don't fucking keep asking. And they straighten the fuck up and fly right. That's how I would handle the situation. I wouldn't be disrespectful, and I wouldn't just cut them off completely, but I would just, no, I don't got it. No, I don't answer my phone. I'm not coming over. I'm not involving myself in family things, and I'm just going to distance myself, okay? That's what you have to do. Now, stop being there all the time for the person. Stop being there. Now, you guys, now listen. Tongue smack, because you know I can't stand that tongue smack shit, okay? Cannot stand the tongue smack. I got another um, real talk. Um, you know what? I can't really do this one. Okay, so we're going to save this one for next week, unfortunately. I'm so sorry. But I have to go get my mumsy, or else, you know, she'll be standing out there waiting for me. And I don't think that's cool. 
But I love you guys. I hope you guys had a great Thanksgiving and a blessed, beautiful week. And um, yeah, and if y'all bitches went Black Friday shopping, I hope y'all didn't go over budget and be acting all crazy. And for those of you guys who have been emailing me, like, when you got to put some wigs up? Okay, so I was going to put some wigs up a week ago, but, you know, my dog passed away. And then I was going to put some up this week, but I just was not feeling too good. So I will have them up either Friday or Saturday, and I've got enough of them to put up. Plus, I will be putting together the synthetic wigs as a synthetic wig lot so that we can get that sale rolling as well. If you guys are not familiar with that just ask the question down below of what is a synthetic wig lot sale and I'll be more than happy to explain it to you guys okay so I love you all stay diva and delicious make sure you rate comment subscribe thumbs this video up and I'll see you guys in a soon to come video